Hi, everybody. Welcome to AI TV, the sister channel of AI Expo Africa. I'm the host, Nick Bradshaw. And on this channel, we like to talk about all things uh, African AI and the fourth industrial revolution that's happening on the African continent. And every month we try and interview a global thought leader or someone trying to make a dent in building the AI community uh, around the world. And I'm, I'm very lucky today to be joined by Fred Werner from the UN uh, ITU, International Telecoms Union. So that's the group of people that essentially set all the standards that make our mobile phones work and uh, lay out the land for technology to work on a global basis. So Fred, welcome to AI TV. How are you doing? Great to be here, Nick. Thanks for having me. Now, Fred, you head up the team that runs the AI for Good uh, program at the, at the UNITU. Do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself and the AI for Good movement and what, what you do uh, in that regard? Yeah, sure. So I'm currently working as the head of strategic engagement for the ITU. And for those of you who don't know what the ITU is, we're the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. And basically, we do three things. We allocate radio spectrum and satellite orbits. We develop uh, international standards that underpin modern telecommunication networks. For example, you and I would not be having this video call interview without ITU standards. And last but not least, we help uh, developing countries to bring up their ICT infrastructure through capacity building and development work and other activities. Uh, we're also the organizers of AI for Good. And AI for Good was created in 2017, and it was built on the premise that we only have a few years to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and AI holds great promise to advance many of those goals and, goals and targets. So anything from uh, climate change to food supply to uh, gender equity, healthcare, education, autonomous driving, smart cities, uh, partnerships uh, for the goals, uh, all of these hold gro great potential um, for AI to help advance the these areas. And But one of the interesting things about AI for Good is that we see uh, a lot of interesting use cases uh, come across our, our desk. Uh, whether it's you know using a mobile phone to uh, detect skin cancer or uh, you know using AI to detect uh, you know maybe tumors on uh, X-rays uh, for for example with lungs or um, using a mobile phone to detect diabetes by photographing your eyeball or or heart disease a predictor of heart disease um, a lot of interesting use cases uh, coming across our desk. Uh, but we can't assume that automatically that all these applications work equally well on men or women or on adults or children or people of different skin colors or indeed in uh, developing countries in low resource settings. So these are not things that the tech industry uh, thinks uh, automatically thinks about. Uh, you know, it's a very fast moving industry, especially with startups. Uh, but there are things that uh, AI for Good thinks about deeply. So simply put, the goal of AI for Good is to identify practical applications of AI to advance the UN Sustainable Development Goals and try create collaboration partnerships to scale those solutions for global impact. That's uh, great, Fred. I mean, I, I know that's a 24-7 endeavor for you guys and the team. So, I mean, obviously, uh, Africa's a massive continent and, and we met through the uh, AI for Good event in Geneva in 2019. And obviously, one of the observations that, 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 that both you and I uh, discussed and agreed on was that obviously the representation of the, of the African continent was, a, was an important thing and we had all these grand plans for 2020 and uh, you came down to South Africa joined us at AI Expo Africa but unfortunately COVID came along to uh, to intervene on those plans um, but we're very happy to say you're coming to AI Expo Africa 2022 in September so we're about three weeks away so what does, what does the show hold in store for you and what, what are you trying to achieve at the event? Yeah, thanks. And uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation and uh, I'm really excited to be coming. Um, you know, quite often people ask us, you know, what is AI for Good or, or how do you do it? You know, and well, first of all, we can't do it alone. So AI for Good, it's done in partnership with 40 UN sister agencies, but also the AI experts themselves would say that AI is too important to leave to the experts themselves. So one of our goals is to bring as many different uh, voices to the table, whether that be uh, UN agencies, member states, uh, industry, academia, civil society, uh, athletes, artists, 
but also to be the most inclusive, diverse, and neutral platform on AI for good in the world. And in doing so, you have to, you know, have all, all countries at the table, if you will. So AI for good, since it's uh, been launched, has uh, basically reached uh, 130 countries uh, in our programming. Uh, it used to be a physical event, now it's a year-long online event. And um, of course, the African countries are super important. And you, you know, you AI Expo Africa and, and your community, which actually extends beyond South Africa to, to most of Africa, has been instrumental in bringing that African uh, community on board. So that's uh, bringing that community both in terms of speakers, experts, participants, uh, knowledge sharing, awareness. And, and that's really been, I think, one of the most important partnerships in AI for Good. So very pleased to, to be coming. Um, we're also a, a platinum sponsor, I believe, or platinum booth exhibitor. So and somehow uh, AI for Good is physically coming to, to Africa at your event. Uh, but also I'll, I'll be presenting. And uh, one of the things I'm excited to present about is really showing some uh, hands-on use cases of AI for Good that we uh, see across our different uh, talks, uh, expert talks, uh, focus groups and challenges and pitching competitions. So lots of interesting uh, applications and also highlighting basically what, what do we do, right? Because uh, AI for Good, one of our claims to fame is that we're more than a talk shop and that we're action oriented. And some of the main outcomes of AI for Good have been uh, what I call um, the building blocks of AI for Good. So we have these uh, pre-standardization efforts on different topics like healthcare, uh, autonomous driving, the environment, natural disaster management, uh, agriculture, uh, telecommunication networks. And we work with uh, you know, international experts, uh, with different UN agencies to basically think about what are the bottlenecks that are stopping or let's say inhibiting AI for Good problem solving at scale. So what I mean by that is, you know, how do you keep a, how do you create a common framework of understanding? So if you're connecting AI innovators with uh, problem owners, how do we help them to speak the same language so, so, so they can work together? At the same time, there's a lot of common problems that need to be solved, like how do you share data in a way that's useful but still respects privacy? Um, you know, what kind of definitions and frameworks and taxonomy is needed to create that common framework of understanding. Um, obviously through that you have the identification of high potential use cases and through that you identify best practices and also how do you know what's good. So quite often they'll be establishing a benchmarking frameworks to basically get to a point where you're comparing apples and apples. Uh, a good example would be in healthcare, for example. Uh, no shortage of uh, useful healthcare apps, uh, many of them found on your iPhone. But if you're, you know, a mayor or a, you know, administrator of a hospital, or if you're in charge of healthcare policy, how do you know that an app is actually good? You know, how can you trust the data? Uh, how can you compare it to other apps? Uh, they all have high potential, but these are big decisions you're going to be making. So they're working on a benchmarking. Uh, framework to test the efficacy of uh, AI health algorithms in that context. So all of the work that's taking care of these uh, focus groups, uh, pre-standardization efforts, they're open, free to all, you don't need membership, there's no fee. Uh, they meet many times a year, uh, it used to be physically, now virtually, but going back to physical. And uh, anyone who has something to bring to the table can join these groups. And, and, and I truly believe that by working on the building blocks of AI for good, that's how you'll achieve scale, that's how AI will scale internationally, and very importantly, that's how developing countries might benefit from AI for good in the future. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, your program and, and, and activities are quite wide ranging, Fred, and I mean, obviously I'm, I'm closer to it than, than probably some of the viewers of this uh, particular video, but I mean, one of the things which I thought was really a really good innovation during the COVID period was your uh, the launch of the neural network now you mentioned that very quickly earlier on now i understand it obviously you've had um thousands and thousands of people uh, log on to the network i've i've i've, I've logged on and we, we've created a an area on the platform for for us and what we do at ai media but i understand that there's over a thousand uh african uh, registrants on on the platform from from 50 african countries do you want to expand a little bit more on the neural network and how people can get involved i'll put a link in the in the video below but do, do you want to explain a little bit more about that 
Yeah, definitely. So, you know, when COVID hit, uh, like you, uh, we, we canceled all our, our plans yeah. and we tried to find a way forward. And very quickly we pivoted and we said, well, instead of waiting for blue skies or an eventual return to physical events, um, why don't we just start our pro programming, uh, putting up our programming virtual? So we started with a few sessions a week that went up to three, four, sometimes five sessions a week. Uh, that totals to about 150 uh, online sessions per, per year. Uh, that, that's a lot of content um, covering basically the positive use of AI uh, under all the SDGs. And at the time we were doing this on Zoom and we were really surprised by the response. I mean, sometimes we'd have two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred people connecting per session from all over the world. And as nice as that was, we thought, well, it's also a missed opportunity that these people are, are not connecting. They, they connect on Zoom, they, they watch a webinar, and then an hour later, they disconnect and go back to their daily lives. And um, as the sessions added up, this was an audience, you know, going from 10 to 50 to 100,000. Uh, we reached over 300 pe 300,000 people online with our streaming uh, during that COVID, uh, let's say, lockdown, if you will. So we said, let's... Um, you know, that's a missed opportunity. What could we do? How could we get these people to connect between sessions and in doing so create opportunities for people to collaborate and, and work on AI for good? Because at the end of, of the day, that's the goal of AI for good. So basically we, we did a, a roundhouse of all the latest solutions, app, uh, platform, software as a service, and settled on a kind of homemade white label solution, which we, basically call uh, the neural network. We describe it as an AI powered uh, matchmaking and community platform. And the simplest way to describe it would be, it would be part Netflix. So in the sense that we have over 500 uh, AI for good sessions online, uh, but you know, we, we don't expect you to browse through 500 sessions. So when you create your profile, you get smart suggestions, uh, just like you would when you uh, log on to Netflix, right? And then the, the content that's most relevant to you, that's what you would probably start by consuming. Uh, and that, that includes uh, past sessions, uh, live sessions, and future sessions as well. Uh, the second part would be what I would call a, a dating app. So basically using uh, the AI smart matching, uh, you take a smart matching quiz and it's organized around uh, topics of interest. So it might be cybersecurity, healthcare, autonomous driving, uh, you know, misinformation, for example, and then uh, you have a collaboration need. So it could be, I need data, or I have data, or I'm looking for funding, or I have funding, or I need cloud storage, or I can offer cloud storage, or, you know, I'm looking to get my career started, and I'm a mentor. So these kind of matches that would happen organically at a at a physical event you know you're having a coffee or a beer and talking to people um we're basically using our you know eating our own dog food if you will using ai to create smart matching both for people to content and people to people and of course the last part which is probably the, the easiest part it's just the, the virtual uh, event functionality right so we we stream all our content there uh you know participants can connect they can chat they can uh, do video calls they can do group calls and of course there's the virtual exhibit area which you're, you're a part of uh where our, our sponsors and partners and un agencies uh basically have virtual booths where people can connect and learn uh we launched it in february we we're pleasantly surprised uh of the uptake we we have over nine thousand profiles now in about six months and just to put that in comparison, our LinkedIn group, it took five years to get 7,000 people on a LinkedIn group, which is just one click of a button, right? It's not a big ask yeah. to join a LinkedIn group. Uh, but the neural network, which is a bit of a heavier ask, you have to create a profile and take smart matching quizzes and put in your SDGs. Uh, 9,000 people did that in six yeah. months, and it's well, growing at a rate of two, 300 a month. So that, that's been really great. And uh, and what you started with is, yeah, we have a number of African countries, over a thousand African country, uh, sorry, participants from 50 African countries, which is almost all of Africa, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're and 120 from people from uh, South Africa as well. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll put the link to the to the the neural network in, in the in the notes um, on this YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to to kind of you know, if you've got an interest, I always say to people. You know the ways to progress your career or, or your knowledge or understanding or meet meet new people it's it's just to jump in and and you know just go in with an open mind and, and sometimes you'll be surprised i mean i get emails uh from the network uh 
I get little messages saying, oh, so-and-so has left a message on our, on my inbox. And, you know, it's someone from Japan who was doing some research on fires, wildfires. And then, yeah, there was another person from Belgium. And, you know, I mean, they're pe people you would probably never meet. Um, but by having a profile, um, yeah, as you say, you know, it's, it's about bringing people to people, people to knowledge, uh, people to companies. Um, and, you know, and that's a really good thing. So I encourage anyone who's interested in that uh, to go to the neural network now. Um, Fred, there's also some, I think you've got some breaking news about the, the AI for good 2023. Am I, am I correct? That, that is correct. And you are the first person outside of ITU staff uh, to, wow. to hear this news and, and your audience as well. Breaking depending. news here on uh, AI TV. Yeah. You heard it first here. An exclusive. Yeah, so we, <laughs> exclusive, exactly. Exclusive. Breaking news. Um, yeah, so, so we are as good as the virtual and the neural network is, uh, we are going to have a physical event as well. Uh, that doesn't mean that the neural network is going to disappear or we're going to stop with our virtual programming. Quite the opposite. We're actually looking at probably 200 online sessions next year. And if the community keeps growing at the rate that it's growing, we may have maybe 20,000 people on the neural network next year. So the benefits of that are, are, are loud and clear, and we definitely want to continue that. Having said that, a lot of people have been knocking on our doors saying, hey, Fred, when can we go to Geneva? We want to meet again. We, we want to have a coffee. We want to network. And I, I think there, there is huge value in that as well. So we're going to have the uh, AI for Good Global Summit. Uh, the 6th to the 7th of July, 2023, in Geneva at the uh, International Congress Center, which if some of the viewers were there in 2019, that's the same venue. Indeed, uh, Nick was there in 2019. And back then, we made big plans uh, to have an Africa, an Africa pavilion in that's 2020. Right. Uh, that plan is still very much in effect. So in 2023, yeah, Nick, I really hope to see you and your colleagues and uh, a nice uh, African representation uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll fire up the old WhatsApp group that we set up, that yeah. pre the pre-2020 COVID, uh, the pre-COVID WhatsApp group. We'll get that going again. But yeah, I think, look, it's important that, um, you know, it, I mean, obviously, it's very difficult to get kind of homogenous uh, global representation um, at, at, a, at an a, a event in a single city. Um, but I mean, I met when I came there in 2019, I met some really interesting people um, as far as Japan and West Coast America. Um, obviously, there were other people from from Europe uh, and, and Asia as well. But it was just this kind of the stimulation and the ideas and some of the things I hadn't even I was new to broadly new to uh, sustainable development goals then as well. And that, that expanded my ideas and thinking around that. Uh, my old environmental chemistry hat came out um, on, on, on some of the conversations. But it was just amazing just to, to see what's going on in the space and, and, and the inf and the innovation that's, that's going on there as well. So, again, um, I'll encourage people to uh, read more. I'll put a link into the AI for Good website as well, Fred. So, um, well, look, we're, we're three weeks out from AI Expo Africa uh, at the time of talking and this interview. And really looking forward, Fred, to welcoming you and the team and, uh, and for you to get to meet um, all the people that are going to be there. I mean, I just added it. We've just been sorting out the floor plan. We've got 63 different companies exhibiting oh, wow. or, or partnering with us um, through the program. Um, which I think is a record for us as well. So, you know, we, we're kind of in terms of a physical event um, and, it, and it really is shaping up really nicely. I think one of the big topics for this year is, is regulation. I think a lot more people now are focusing on the softer issues around using AI. I think, you know, it's a given now that this technology is in the business environment. It is creeping into society and, and personal use. But really the question is, you know, how do we manage it? How do we you know, what, what if it goes wrong? Um, what are these challenges? The softer issues are now becoming the more important issues. So I think it's a great time for you to be coming back, Fred, and we're looking forward to your talk. And it just leaves me to say thanks for joining us uh, from Geneva today, Fred, and we'll, we'll see you in a, in a few days' time. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks for the chat. Really looking forward to meeting everyone in person again and also welcoming, you know, you, you, you and all your colleagues uh, in Geneva in, I think, 11... 11 or 10 months from now. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to come quick. Um, but... I'll plan, I plan my, uh, my 50th birthday cycling holiday, which has been delayed for two and a half years. I think I know what the destination is going to be now. So looking forward you to it. You can definitely combine, yeah, to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> Geneva, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fred. We'll see you soon. Take care. Yeah.